morning, guys. Day two. Um, get some breakfast and go straight to the straight to the club. We have two qualifier matches for the first round and at 10 a.m. And then we have Evan uh, Song playing the second one, and Roy Smith from Houston is playing as well. So hopefully, I get to see him and say hi. Um, hopefully, he'll remember me as well. Um, but I'm eating breakfast right now. It's not complimentary, which I'm kind of pissed about. But you know how you realize how old you're getting. Um, I just realized that uh, from getting up and picking up a newspaper. Hmm. <laughs> Never thought I would do that. Um, usually, when I grab a newspaper, it's usually when someone offers me like, "Oh, do you want this section?" I go, "Yeah, sure." Not like willingly to pick up a newspaper. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have breakfast here, and we're gonna go straight to it, and then I have to. Buy a fucking charger for this damn camera because I forgot mine. All right, let's go. Big ass hands. So big ass hands. My feet too. What size shoe are you? A men's 11. She has bigger hands and bigger feet than me. What the fuck? Look at this. <laughs> I hate my life. So here's an update. It's 12 o'clock right now. Day, officially day one here at the Cleveland Challenger. I'm gonna try the food here at the Country Club. I'm going to break the bank because I have no money. But things that have happened today, let's see. Let's see what has happened today. We've had a three-set thriller. We've had a guy that looks like he's about to play Fred Perry in 1945. And then this coach has been having an argument with an ATP uh, official for the last 45 minutes. Do I know what it's about? No. Am I going to ask? Absolutely not. Should I ask him about it? Nah, not even close. But, um, yeah, uh, that's my update. Hopefully, I get to do an interview today. Hopefully, you guys can stay tuned for that. Um, other than that, everything's going pretty well so far. Uh, Evan Song is playing right now. Uh, Roy Smith is playing up next. We have, uh, we have a lot of good stuff going on. Oh, and one thing I forgot. A woman had a stroke outside. So... She, she seems to be okay, from what I've been told. But other than that, it's been pretty good so far. Um, it's a nice place. I'm just hungry. Now here is Great Britain's very own Liam Brody for an interview. 
what like, happens when you show up day before the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what's your expectation coming into these kind of tournaments? Uh, Especially one like Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, so I had a, I had a pretty tough 12 months last year. Mm -hmm. um, of course. Yeah, start, started the year, you know, reasonably well, got, got a win and lost to... Donbass, who's obviously a, another good player, it wasn't an easy draw, mm -hmm. uh, and then served the match, the second tournament, um, so, you know, I mean, it's kind of like a, an engine that's just sort of, you know, you're trying to get started, <laughs> and I feel like if I get one or two wins, I'll, I'll be up and running, I'll be flying, uh, you know, get, getting where I want to get, mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, t to be honest, I'm not going to look past the first round this week. I think if, okay. I, if I can get a win under my belt, then I think the sky's the limit. There you um, go. Because I am a bit of a momentum player. So, obviously, it's a tough draw, especially against Victor. Yeah, um, of course. You know, he knows how to play. He's been around the block. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there's no pressure, and it's a chance to, uh, to make a bit of a statement. What's it like playing uh, for Great Britain in a Davis Cup match, especially against a team like Spain? Yeah, um, I mean, it was it was magical, to be honest. I mean, obviously, I'd been a part of the team before as a hitting partner, mm -hmm. um, which was which was a great experience in itself. Yeah. Uh, you know, to, to be around that professional sort of attitude. Well, I mean, obviously, it's a professional sort of attitude here, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a different level at the mm -hmm. arena. Um, but to actually be on the court and competing is just... It's, it's hard to explain, you know, we, we had two or three thousand travelling British mm -hmm. fans to Spain and, and playing Ramos on the clay, it was... Yeah. It, it, That's it, awesome. Yeah, it was brilliant, it was brilliant. It's an experience that hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll you know, learn from or have learnt from and, and, I'll, and I'll bank that and take it with me because, you know, at the end of the day, I know Davis Cup's changed now, but... Yeah. Do you like the new format or is it... I mean, be honest. I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would have preferred the old yeah. Davis Cup, but there was so much pre prestige to it, you know, and I think yeah. you kind of saw, like... There were teams like that weren't playing for anything towards the yeah. the end of the year in Davis Cup, and and still guys were, you know, going five set battles yeah. and crying on court when they were winning and stuff. And I think you know it Dave, means a lot. Yeah, Davis Cup. I mean, maybe it maybe they'd be able to make more money off a different format, but Davis Cup to the players is, mm -hmm. you know, has been and always will be a prestigious tournament. You know, it's mm -hmm. like. Yeah, it's, well, it's one of the oldest tournaments in the sport, isn't it? So, yeah, of course. Yeah. And if you don't mind me asking this question.
to thank Liam for do taking his time out of his day to talk to us. And he plays tomorrow, so I hope he wins as well. So thank you, Liam Brody, for doing that as well. So what happened today? What happened today? Let's see. Let's start with let's start with the fact that some guy looked like Fred Perry when he played in the 1930s. Uh, let's look at so yeah that happened. Um, we had a lot of good three set matches. I got to see a lot of cool. What am I saying? This was today was fun. I liked what we did today. Uh, some guy was sleeping as well. I tried the food at uh, Country Club as well. It was pretty good. $15 for spaghetti. $7 at Piata if you know what that is. Fast food Italian for $8 and that's still better, I thought. <laughs> and then I went to Chipotle for dinner where I got to hang out with a couple ATP players and listen to their stories on tour and who they met and stuff like that. And I like, and I like doing that and I like hanging out with these guys uh, if I can and if I have the chance because it... You really get to learn about the tour and you really get to listen to these stories of how they played and who they know and what what it's actually like to be a tennis player and talking to one of their coaches at uh, at dinner was was interesting because th he's right about the like you can't do this without going insane you can't be so mentally driven and so focused on tennis that you have to be doing it all the time. If you don't let players go out and experience different things and enjoy other atmospheres, instead of looking at a hotel room wall for 24 hours and you do the same routine of wake up, club, gym, hotel, and do that all over again a week straight, I think you're just gonna go mentally insane. I so I give these guys a lot of credit because it's not just playing, it's traveling, it's mental, it's it's a whole lot of other factors that you have to take into account. And I like learning about that and I like learning about who they are. And I think when you have a casual conversation and listening to them off the record when I'm not trying to record them makes it even better. And if you guys did enjoy today's vlog, make sure to leave a like on this video and make sure you're subscribed to Tweener Head Tennis. If you are new, check us out behind the scenes at all our social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And if you want to check out cool merchandise like these t-shirts and sweatshirts and stickers, go to tweenerheadtennis.com as well as behind the scenes articles. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope to see you guys tomorrow. Thanks guys.